Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2 says, And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Acts chapter 9, verse 17 through 19. So Ananias went and found Saul. He laid his hands on him and said, Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus who appeared to you on the road has sent me so that you might regain your sight and be filled with the Holy Spirit. Instantly, something like scales fell from Saul's eyes and he regained his sight. Then he got up and was baptized. Afterward, he ate some food and regained his strength. Acts chapter 10, verse 15 and 16. But the voice spoke again, do not call something unclean if God has made it clean. The same vision was repeated three times, then the sheet was suddenly pulled up to heaven. Thank you. Thank you, Jairus. Please be seated. Once again, I want to greet all God's people in Jesus' name. And it is a joy to be in the presence of God, standing with God's word. This afternoon, we are here to meditate on the uh, scripture passages which was read to us, which were read to us, and most importantly, from um, Romans chapter 12 and verse number 2 is where I'm going to focus on. Let me read from the NLT once again. Don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. So changing the way you think, that is where I'm going to focus on this afternoon. When we talk about conversion, there is a lot of news going around, around the world, especially in uh, India, where conversion has become a very, very familiar term, or you can say infamous term to uh, many of the people in India, especially uh, these are the allegations made against Christians. But I was just thinking about the, the, the word conversion. Where did that word conversion come from? Or what is actually conversion? It is, is it just like changing somebody's religion or is it changing somebody's, uh, you know, uh, the way of style? And uh, when we come to Christianity, we think about so many things. You know, we, some people say, oh, because he got, he repented. So there is a conversion that has taken place. He has confessed. So confession means, you know, conversion. And some even say that, they, that there was a baptism to, that has taken place. So that means some conversion has taken place. And, uh, you know, and some people say because they are going to church. He was not going earlier, but he's going to church. She's going to church, so there is a conversion. Some people even think that paying tithe is a mark of conversion. All these are part of, you know, the life of a converted person, but I would like to go into a little more detail, into deeper, uh, to understand what is meant by true conversion. True conversion, I would, I would uh, term it based on the scripture from Romans chapter 12, is the changing of the mind. Or I like the NLT version, that's why I picked up that this time, which says that changing the way you think. Changing, changing the way I think. So that is what will be the focus this afternoon. Perfect conversion or true conversion is a change of mind and the thought pattern. And we all know that one way or other way, everyone is, you know, biased in his or her thinking. You know, because they are influenced uh, 
by their own world you know or the own culture and so sometimes it is contrary to the biblical principles so when the biblical principles are not really um, uh, implied into one's life whatever conversion you think of or we think of is i don't want to term it as a true conversion sometimes we don't realize it sometimes we keep doing the same thing but we don't realize that there is a need for a conversion that should be taking place in our lives in my life so most of the conversion that takes place is in our mind the way we think the day we decided that i need to leave the worldly pattern and accept the lord jesus christ and follow what is written in the scriptures i you know believe in my heart and i confess with the with my mouth and i become a saved christian but it is still more than that many times in our mind there are certain things which god wants to bring god wants to you know uh, uh, imprint but there are certain blocks you know there are some lit- limitations because of the social or traditional or religious belief systems there are many things that block us block the mind and knowingly unknowingly we do not realize that we need to make a change so i am going to bring all these thoughts in my discussion this afternoon first of all i want to talk about the word conversion and you know, we have heard a lot of uh, you know definitions about conversion but i want to make it very simple very simple for all of us to understand by the way those two references from acts chapter 9 and from acts chapter 10 we read about two important christian you know um, uh, uh, men of god i you they were the apostles of christ and they were one of the most influential christians of the first century so i will take their examples and try to explain to us what i am trying to convey to all of us this afternoon first of all what is conversion repentance is like turning back and you know, turning from your old ways or in a different sense we can say it is making a 180 degree turn 180 some people make a turn and that is 360 degree no like they make a turn but they come back to the same stage so there is no point of that turning that is not really repentance you would make a turn and come back to the same place but i would say it is not 360 but 180 degrees you know you are go- going this way but you are coming back coming and turning to this side this was not our way this was man's way but god wants us to go this way this is how i was thinking once upon a time but now god is steering us or you can say i say that we are keep on turning the steering wheels just like we turn the steering wheel of the car we turn the steering wheel of our mind keep turning from this side keep turning it is quite difficult now we have power steering and all but this mind you know will not be affected even by the power steering you know it needs a lot of lot of strength and courage and also grace of god for uh, the mind to turn from this way to that way because we have been doing this for many years and we want somebody wants to ask us to change from this to this it is not easy no whether we are in the school or in the college or in the workplace there are certain you know uh, system we are in and we will it's not easy for uh, anybody to come and tell you your boss to come and tell you that change your ways i have noticed that you know uh, once in a while wilson uncle comes and says that everybody please stand up and uh, please come forward and all and that week you will have the front benches filled filled up you know again back to the 360 degree and it's not our mistake it is the man's nature actually you know then he has to come again after one month and again repeat the same thing so think about this is there any rip, any <laughs> conversion taken place so it won't happen it won't happen unless we make a deliberate attempt eh? even though uncle doesn't announce we should tell our mind see that we heard that announcement a few weeks back and so i have to do that 
but our mind will say no 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 it's okay we have been sitting here for long time, many years now 35 years so that is my permanent seat and i cannot change from there so but then you know that's why i said you have to keep moving the steering now keep moving power steering will not work i don't know some kind of force is needed this was just an example there are many things which i am going to go into deeper now so developing conversion also means developing a broad mind and that will be based on acts chapter 9 and 10 i'll come to that in few minutes time broad mind a mind which is different from the way we have been thinking our minds are very narrow in our thinking no in our thought pattern thoughts will bring actions no the way we think if i'm going to think very narrowly then things will not change sometimes we have to think out of the box out of the box and that is when we see that changes happen we'll try to see what happened to the life of peter and paul how were they thinking were they broad minded was there any change in their thinking and we will be thinking about that in few minutes time another uh, 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 definition based on the life of paul you see that there is a there is a phrase written given there falling off the scale from the eyes that was in connection with paul's life he was saul and he was you know he was going from jerusalem to damascus on the way to damascus to persecute the christians and uh, you know church was earnestly praying but because this man was persecuting the christians like anything and uh, so god in his own way you know dealt with saul and the light fell on him uh, and and he he fell down and then he he was blind he was blind and so after 3 days the scales fell off that's where i have picked up verse number 18 of acts chapter 19 and that's what jeres read few minutes back I, actually it's a long passage but i just asked him to read only that uh, only those few verses in order to save time you know the context in which it is written so falling off the scale from the eyes is what i term it as conversion you know in the literal sense you can say that paul who was saul earlier was not able to see anything for 3 days for 3 days and so after 3 days the prophet comes and lays hands on him the scale falls off falls off and then he is able to see so from a literal point of view he is able to see something new he has not seen prophet ananias before and, uh, and not at least not in that situation because everybody was afraid of saul <laughs> nobody would like to come near him but here is a pastor a prophet coming and standing right in front of his eyes as soon as he opened his eyes and that was something spectacular for him and he was a lion now he has become a lamb and that is what was the situation of paul so literally the scale fell off from his eyes and from a symbolic point of view when i say that the scales are falling from the eyes means a developing a new vision developing a new kind of a vision in paul's saul's life his name changed and his vision changed earlier his vision was to destroy all those who followed jesus christ and he did not like that and he was killing and putting them in jail and beating and doing all kinds of things and what he can do based on the authority he has got from the high priest but now he has got a new vision he is he is converted he has become he has got a new vision and he is able to see something very very different from what he was thinking earlier he was thinking from a religious perspective now he is thinking from a spiritual perspective earlier he got the vision from the studies he had made or from all the research he had made while he was studying under gamaliel but now he got a new vision after he had an encounter with god and that is what i saw uh, the conversion in the life of saul becoming paul so this afternoon i want to pick up all these uh, definitions of the word conversion and try to explain to all of us including myself the meaning of conversion the true conversion let me go to the very second very important point conversion of two apostles two missionaries both of them were apostles both of them was were missionaries 
they they became apostles they became missionaries earlier they were not and they were they are paul and peter look at that it should have been peter and paul now here itself you can see there is a message which i am trying to convey it, because peter is the one who was supposed to be you know uh, coming before paul but if you look at the chapters also paul comes first and then comes peter so you if you are very carefully studying the scripture you will understand what i am trying to say <laughs> who convert who got converted first so that is a very interesting thing which i was doing i was studying last week and i wanted to uh, talk to us uh, about this now now uh, let's think about uh, apostle paul when did he get converted when he did he get converted now we say that he got converted right after his repentance by the way uh when was which year was that i was looking at the uh, you know various scholars opinion i found out that ad 34 ad 34 means uh you know jesus was most probably crucified in ad 29 or 30 uh, because there's a date you know there's a correction in the date and uh, some people say 33 but it is 29 or 30 and this is ad 34 ad 34 and that is when uh, saul you know he repented and he got converted on the way to damascus in acts according to acts chapter 9 verse 15 onwards paul was blind for 3 days he was blind literally he was blind he could not see anything you know just like uh, people of egypt egypt were like uh, they were in dark darkness for 3 days this man was not able to see anything his eyes were totally blind i don't know from a medical point of view if you look at it the because of the the intense light that fell upon his eyes maybe his uh, uh, you know um, retina or whatever in you know, the eye uh, the important elements got damaged you know and uh, uh, it was god's mercy that he was able to see at a later stage so he was a uh, confronted by the the spirit of god the light fell on him and he was literally blind for 3 days and he was uh, spiritually also blind for many years you know i was looking at the age of paul he was most probably 30 years old and he he was martyred at the age of 60 that's what many of the scholars you can the dates may go a little up and down but at least he was 30 years old some even say that uh, he was a scholar he became a rabbi at the age of 25 this is a debated issue usually they get at the age of 30 but he was extra smart he was so smart he came all the way from tarsus which is outside jerusalem you know in asia minor and from there he came and studied in jerusalem under gamaliel so you understand uh, within few years he was so well versed in torah and he was an expert that he he was made the rabbi of uh, the uh, you know the synagogue of uh, tarsus uh, or there was a synag- uh, there was a uh, sorry yeah synagogue of tarsus in jerusalem so he was the leader and somehow some people say he influenced the high priest and i don't know it is not written in the bible but some other scholars say that he influenced he impressed the uh, the, the high priest of that time that he got connected to his daughter <laughs> whose daughter high priest daughter i mean that is not there in bible it's another story outside and so he was getting getting ready to marry her and that is how he was so much uh, you know influential to get the authority letter from the from the high priest and with that authority letter he was going to persecute christians all around jerusalem and he was going on the way to anti uh, damascus god confronted him so that, that that means he was a such an influential person of that time but he was blind for many many years though he knew the torah so very well he got a plus grade he knew everything so well he was one of the most renowned students of the renowned uh, teacher teacher was none other than gamaliel you know gamaliel was one of the most famous professors of that time you can say uh, like those professors who teach in uh, uh, you know harvard university or top universities of india 
Gamaliel was counted like that in those days. And studying under such, an, such a teacher was not an easy thing. And, and he did his study, he did his research so quick that, and he knew the word so very well, the Torah so very well. But despite of the fact that he knew Torah very well, he was blind for, spiritually blind for 30 years. And because in the Torah, it was very clearly mentioned about the coming Messiah, who would be him, and he must have studied Isaiah, and he had done exegesis, eisegesis, and all kinds of studies, but unfortunately, he was blind. So physically blind for three, three days, spiritually blind for 30 years. I'm just trying to give you the background of Paul. Paul's blind eyes were opened right after his repentance period. Three days, what was he doing? I believe that he was sitting there and praying, Lord, you, I, I was able to talk to you that afternoon. After that, what is your plan? You have told me. And he was probably repenting of all those sins he had done, committed in this few years' time. Because he understood, he realized that all those believers were innocent. They were right. They followed the the path of the righteousness and they followed the true God and they found out the true Messiah. I was the only one at wrong. And he realized it and he started repenting. And for three days he was repenting. You can see that. Acts chapter 9 verse 17 to 19. So Paul's blind eyes, both literal and spiritual eyes, were opened on, on the third day. It took three days. Remember that. Three days. It took three days for Paul to uh, see things in a new way. Now, I'm just looking at uh, various issues. I'll come to that a little later. But uh, just <clears throat> looking at uh, Paul's life, he had a cultural con 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 conversion of mind. His mind was culturally converted, you know, spiritually converted. You know, in many ways, he was converted. What do you mean by cultural transformation? conversion. Please listen to me very carefully. Here we see that Paul was able to accept others just as they were. They are. You know, conversion means there are all those definitions which I gave you earlier. Repentance, confession, baptism, all these things are okay. But the true conversion is to accept others just as they are. To know others. Now this was the kind of person Paul was. He went and tried to understand. That's why he writes, there is no Jew nor Greek, you know, in Christ Jesus. Earlier it was not so. He thought only Jews are the children of God. Now his thinking pattern has changed. He is trying to understand. He went to the uh, slaves. He went to the high class people. He went to all kinds of people and he stayed with them, ate with them, and he fellowship with them. And he had no issues after his conversion. So he was able to accept others just as they are. Many times in our lives, although we, we claim that we are converted, we are transformed, we are not able to understand others, you know, from their perspective. Why they are thinking like that? Why they are crying like that? Why they are feeling like that? What is their problem? You know, many times we don't understand. We, I have my own perspective. I am, li I am like a frog inside my own well. I have not gone outside that well. So that is why I think that I am the only one right. Others are all wrong. But Paul started thinking about others. And he understood them. And that is the reason he was used by God. I can say that there was a cultural transformation happening. Let me move forward. Then, cultural conversion means to become like others, to win others. Give me 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 19 to 23. After his ministry, different parts of the world, what is the strategy he is uh, giving? Even though, this is a strategy of Paul. Please, uh, you can underline this. Very important strategy of Paul that made him successful. Even though I am free, a free man with no master, I have become a slave to all people to bring many to Christ. Remember, he's a scholar. He's the most educated person, most influential person once upon a time. And when, then, then he says, when I was with the Jews, I lived like a Jew to bring the Jews to Christ. 
when i was with those who follow the jewish law i too lived under the, that law even though i am not subject to the law i did this so i could bring to christ those who are under the law who had when i am with the gentiles who do not follow the jewish law i too live apart from that that law so that i can bring them to christ but i do not ignore the law of god i obey the law of christ when i am with those who are weak i share the weakness for i want to bring the weak to the christ to christ yes i try to find common ground that's point common ground with everyone doing everything i can to save some to i do everything to spread the good news and share it share in its blessings he is trying to say that i find a common ground i am not becoming like them like somebody said somebody was caught in the uh, coming out of the liquor shop and uh, and uh, so one of the believers asked why did you go there he said i went there to win the souls inside the liquor shop now that is not an excuse no you are not going there or you are not going there to change somebody there you can change somebody outside also that is what not i am that is not what i am saying he went to their place became like them and he understood them not compromising with the word of god you know i need i i know i need to know the line which i have to draw and beyond that i don't go but i have to go i have to understand that person understand that person have sympathy empathy with him or her and change try to change that is what paul did and that was that is what i term it as cultural conversion and another thing is he had he, to have a he had a broad mind because of his multicultural setting and his open minded mindness so where was paul born he was born in tarsus acts chapter 22 verse 3 says he was born in tarsus he was a you can say like uh, we have we are we called as non resident indians like nris we many, many of our children are born here but we are indians like we our parents are indian so likewise paul though he was a jew was born in an outside world in a gentile world and that makes a lot of difference in that that makes a lot of difference i was thinking if i was born if i was born in kerala my thinking would have been different but praise god I, even though i was born in kerala i was raised in jammu kashmir i grew up in north india so my perspective has seen that's what i'm saying perspective my thinking pattern has changed you know uh, otherwise i would have been thinking like uh, people in uh, those who are born in kerala nothing wrong about getting uh, born in kerala okay please don't misunderstand me <laughs> what i'm trying to say is you know some of our friends are born in kerala that's nothing wrong even i am born in kerala but when you go to the outside world we think differently we go out, come out of the box and that's what had happened to paul he was raised in a multicultural multilingual setting and he was able to mingle he was able to uh, talk to the greeks and to the slaves to the people outside to the romans and he had a roman citizenship though he was a jew so all kinds of thinking uh, had changed just like uh, many of our children who are born here and raised here although they are born to the indian parents you know their perspective is different from that that of people who are born in india so paul in a very positive sense now there are some positive things also and negative things also i'm not uh, uh, going into the negative part i just want to draw out the positive point now just focus on the positive let's draw the positive thing just forget about the negative thing this is what happened to paul he started understanding them in a different way his mind was broad minded then that time itself but look at the life of peter let's come to peter peter it took 10 and a half years for his repentance why do i say 10 and a half years he joined jesus when he was most probably some say he was 30 or 32 he joined jesus 10 and a half years before uh, this incident happened acts chapter 10 when god had to show him a vision and he joined jesus's party and he was there with him for three and a half years of strict bible training and practical training everything was going on but peter was blind for more than 10 and a half years paul was blind for 30 long years okay but after he met jesus he remained like that only for three days but in the case of peter even after meeting jesus he was blind for 10 and a half years what a contrast you know 
he 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 studied under direct discipleship of jesus and encountered the holy spirit on the day of pentecost acts chapter 2 he was filled with the holy spirit he was speaking in tongues he preached a wonderful sermon 3000 people got saved he was the leader of the disciples you can say one way or other way nobody made him but he was the leader one way and church was growing one of the we you know senior leaders of the church but despite of all his experience despite of staying with jesus for three and a half years and counted among the core group of jesus christ because jesus had a core group three peter john and james jesus taking him to the mount of transfiguration and uh, after that he denied and jesus goes after him and then he comes back after all these wonderful experience i was thinking that if we had at least at least an a small in, 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 uh, interaction like that like that of peter we would have been uh, blessed but in this case he had all experience and on top of that on the day of pentecost that wonderful experience of the coming of the holy spirit despite of all that peter was blind why do i say that why do i say that when you come to acts chapter 10 you see that god asked him to go to a gentile now i'm coming to the point he go to a gentile to share the gospel but he said no i will not go i will not go he was not ready to go to a non jew a non jew because he was out of the culture out of his culture and he never thought that they will be saved he thought salvation is meant only for the jews <laughs> i was thinking what was he doing there in the bible study <laughs> what did he understand so many times many people go to the church they hear all kinds of message but at the end of the year do you call that conversion they are the same just like peter 10 and a half years i don't know about our case <laughs> you can judge yourself i can judge myself am i really converted i was born in a pastor's family a missionary family and in north india and i thought that if you want to go to heaven you need to be born in ipc nothing wrong about it i am an ipc ordained pastor but i thought if you get if you want to get to heaven you need to be in ipc because that's the only church i saw in jammu kashmir only when i was doing my degree set, i mean after my graduation i went for my bible study in in kerala and i found out that there were many other christians even among pentecostals there were other groups church of god sharon assemblies of god independence and so many others and then outside the outside non pentecostals are there jacobites are morthomites are there csi many other anglicans are there presbyterians are methodists are there then i realized oh there are christians outside even that then i started uh, meeting them and i realized that there many of them are better christians than me I was just thinking like Peter I am confessing about myself I don't know about you So I was just thinking like myself I said I am the only person you know some people I've heard testifying that I have the blood of my denomination inside me running through my body that kind of <laughs> that feeling they have about their own denomination nothing wrong about it nothing wrong about it to be proud of your denomination to be proud of your group but we need to think outside the box box look at peter finally god had to show him that dream you know that vision in that vision he saw many kinds of animals and he said i have never touched any unclean look at the way he says unclean that means these people are unclean even though jesus washes them they are still unclean because my mind is unclean because my mind is not converted because i am not transformed and so we see that Peter's eyes were opened after 10 and a half years. Peter's eyes were opened after God audibly spoke with him. You know, he saw the vision three times, the same vision three times while he was there. First time he didn't listen. Second time, third time. So how much of hard work God had to make do in order to convert this guy? He was a person who was sensitive to the Holy Spirit, still he was not totally transformed. that's a point i was realizing paul just three days peter 10 and a half years what is that 
instead of peter coming first paul is coming first as the converted person that is why we see that peter's story is written in acts chapter 10 paul's story is written in acts chapter 9 that's how the holy spirit has placed it you know it is very unfortunate but that is very very important in our lives also we need to know where we are right now am i truly transformed am i truly thinking out of the box impact of that true conversion you see that paul's ministry was wider while peter's was limited you see that paul was accepted was was accepted widely though peter was given the keys by jesus christ show me the map can you show me the map where all this man went you see that you see three lines there three colors these are the three missionary journeys of paul he started from jerusalem antioch then went to asia minor then went to europe you know then he went to rome that uttermost part that was the headquarters of the roman kingdom paul made three missionary journeys and there is a fourth one for, while in the fourth one he was taken to rome but three missionary journeys he went to the gentiles all kinds of people just listen whereas peter he he was happy with jerusalem big church 3000 then 5000 center pastor of that place happy about it interesting peter you should have been used more than paul more than paul what happened to you it just because your mind was not transformed you are narrow minded you didn't think out of box while paul came late that's why some that's why it is written those who are last shall be first and the first shall be last i'm talking to each one of us i'm talking to myself this afternoon may the holy spirit talk to each, each one of us the church growth was tremendous during paul's ministry this is the point i'm going to bring the church growth was tremendous during paul's ministry how many churches were established all those seven churches you see in asia minor in the book of revelation were one way or other way planted by paul indirectly or directly he was in ephesus he was in antioch he was in smyrna i mean thessalonica he was in corinth he went to he went to rome everywhere he went he established a church the strategy of paul was he first when he goes to a city he'll find he try to find out whether there are jews or not then he goes to the synagogue he preaches there i know by by the time by the middle of the preaching they'll get up and the elder will get up and say stop preaching because he is telling the truth no so but he found it as a point of contact and some of those people in the synagogue will get converted and after that he'll be chased out of the synagogue then when they chase him out of the synagogue he goes to gentiles that is what jesus taught that you will be my witnesses in jerusalem come on judea samaria and the uttermost part of the world what happened to peter peter you are happy with jerusalem and judea at the most you go to samaria and only when god was trying to explain to him come on go to that that gentiles house he said no no i will not go i will not go then god had to show him that vision three times and i am telling you friends if peter had opened his mind if he people peter had been broad minded and allowed the holy spirit to open his mind see i am telling you one thing god can change your heart but not can he cannot change your mind only i can change my mind that's a free will that's what is the problem with human beings i am the only one who can change my mind that's why paul says let your mind be renewed holy spirit can help you but i have to make the decision peter you have to make the decision paul you made the decision that night that evening when you understood when he heard that voice and he said are you the one i am persecuting and his change happened because he realized he has read in the scriptures and according to the pharisaic understanding when the messiah comes and when he is resurrected the doors for the gentiles will be opened he had studied so study is good actually paul had studied it but his eyes were blind but just one attempt by the holy spirit transformed paul's life and what happened to paul then you know that 
church started growing tremendously. Paul was able to produce multicultural pastors and evangelists. Who are those? Timothy, half Jew. Titus, a Gentile. Philemon, a non-Jew. And also a lady pastor also. I mean, it's not even pastor, but Lydia. <laughs> so many people outside the fold are waiting for Paul. They were waiting, they were waiting since Peter got converted. I mean, the first conversion, not the real conversion. And Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. He preached a fantastic sermon. He should have been going to Asia Minor. He should have been going to Europe. But no, I am happy with this only. My friends, the church did not grow. I am telling you the secret why many churches are not growing. They are in the same state after many years. is because of this reason. I don't know how many will say I am into that. That is a fact. Unless I break that shell, unless I say that I want to come out of this and think differently, unless I allow the Holy Spirit to open my mind and think widely, the things will not change. Peter will remain there in Jerusalem. He'll be happy to save some souls in Jerusalem. But if you want to be used by God like Paul, you need to change. And then his strategy changed. I became all things for all men. He was inside the jail. He started a church there. He went to Asia Minor. He started a church there. He went to Europe. He started a church there. Wherever he went, he started a church. Not because he was educated. Not because he was a good speaker. Paul was not a good speaker actually. He was a good writer. Whereas Apollos was a good speaker. So that is one thing we need to keep in mind. Paul was not a good speaker. And he was ashamed when, you know, because of his structure, or his physical structure, and because of his eyesight, and because of many other reasons. He had difficulty in writing also. He was a good writer, of course. He was a good writer. But why was Paul used by God? What God is looking for from us is not ability. He's looking for availability. Availability of my mind. Friends, many times... If we want to see how God can use, visit some other churches also. And see. I'm not saying uh, miss the Sunday service here and go there. That's not what I'm saying. Please don't misunderstand me. In between there are times when you can, the special meetings are there. How God is using water of life. How God is using other churches. Many places are there. We need to know what is their strategy. We need to understand Otherwise, God cannot use unless I transform my mind. Without real transformation, I'll be like the frog inside the well until the Lord comes. And the Lord had to come to the well and say, come, ready, I'm here. Please don't take it as a joke. I'm telling you from the, from the burden from my heart. God wants us to increase in number. God wants us to bless. And unless... We open our minds. If a non-Christian comes to in our midst, I should be willing to accept him or her just like that. I should be able to talk to that person. I should be able to sympathize and empathize with that person. Otherwise, we'll remain the same. We'll remain the same. Church will not grow. Church grew during Paul's ministry. Peter's ministry, I'm not saying God did not use him. He, God, was, God used him. But God could have used him more than Peter, more than Paul. Because he was the first one to see Jesus. Stay with Jesus. Got the direct revelation from Jesus. All what Paul got was, you know, through vision he got. But direct words of Jesus were received by Peter. And even he said that you are the son of God. And Jesus, you know, acknowledged him and said, you got it from the father. All those good experience. In spite of all that, I remain the same. I'm telling you, Christianity in Kerala came in AD 52. AD 52. Thomas came to Kerala. <laughs> Let me tell that historical fact and stop. AD 52, Thomas came to Kerala. And history says that he converted seven Brahmins. And several others got converted. And one day, this man got martyred in Madras, in Chennai. And after that, the church started growing. But it remained like that. 
there was a group called St. Thomas Christians. Later on, Thomas of Cana came from, uh, from Syria and that, they were called as Canaanite Christians. And that, that group was called as St. Thomas Christian. And then later on, they became Orthodox, Jacobites, and then from them came the Marthomites, and then later on. But these Christians remained like that and limited themselves in the geographical region of Kerala. Unfortunately, for nine, 1800 years, Christianity did not go out of Kerala. I'm very, very sad to say that. All of North India was there. All of East India was there. Why didn't they go? Because they were happy with their biological growth. Sorry, sorry to say that. Biological growth. Growth was there. Biological growth, not numerical growth. Numerical growth came only after the Europeans, the Westerners came to India. William Carey came to India. He, became, he was a cobbler and God used him. He learned the language of the country. I'm, I know it's a missionary, missionary uh, message, mission message, so please take it in that sense also. And many people who came to other parts of India, a revival took place. Why God had to bring all the people from, from one Thomas came from Jerusalem to Kerala, so many people were changed. But they remained the same group for 1800 years. And then God had to bring Europeans. Methodists and Presbyterians, Anglicans, all of them came. Roman Catholics, they preached the gospel. And that is how the mass movement took place in 1900s and 2000s. I'm telling you, friends, that is the story of Christianity in India. We may say God's time was not, uh, not had come. No, no, I, I, don't, I don't think that way. That may be a little bit, but God's time is there when I am ready. I am ready. Friends, God is waiting for us. This is a missionary challenge to all of us. Shall we close?